All right, everyone. As you can see, I'm running Windows on my Mac, and this in itself is nothing special. You have a couple of options if you have a newer Intel Mac. You can either use Boot Camp or buy virtualization software from Parallels or VMware Fusion, and that'll set you back $80. But if you want to do virtual machines for free, um, that really hasn't been available until recently. And the software I'm doing I'm utilizing to make this happen is called VirtualBox. Now this is a free open source project sponsored by Sun Microsystems and it allows you to run a large selection of operating systems within Mac OS X. It gives you options to run older versions of Windows going back to Windows 98 second edition, NT, 2000, XP, and even going up to Vista. In addition to that, if you want to mess around and do virtualization of Linux or Unix distributions, you can install Ubuntu, um, Fedora, OpenBSD, FreeBSD, any of the uh, large number of uh, Linux distributions out there. You can run it in VirtualBox. And just um, on my system here, what I've done is I've put Windows 2000 on my MacBook because uh, a couple of years ago, I went out and I spent $200 to actually purchase Windows 2000. And it's a really stable OS. It's probably the best version of Windows Microsoft's ever made. So I really dig Windows 2000. And running it inside this environment, I notice it's very stable. I have I've went to a couple banking websites and used Internet Explorer just to get some things done in this. And I left the machine running for about four or five hours straight, continuous. And I experienced no problems at all. It's perfectly stable. And if you ask me, when other people talk about, well, I think it's a little bit slower. I don't feel any slowdowns or any differences in speed running a virtualized environment compared to when I used to run Windows 2000 on my old PC. It's just as fast, and in some cases, it's certainly faster than running uh, Windows 2000 on real hardware. The key to having virtualization software run smoothly is to put in as much RAM as you can comfortably afford into your system. In my case I'm running a first generation MacBook with a 2 gigahertz core dual processor and 2 gigabytes of memory, which is the maximum amount of memory supported by my system. And if you're running uh, older versions of Windows, such as Windows 2000, you'll do fine with running 512 megs of RAM. And in my virtual machine setup, I've given it 640 megs of RAM with 16 megs of video memory. And that's only because I want to be able to see things in 24-bit color at a native 12, 1280 by 800 resolution when I go full screen. So running older versions of Windows, such as XP or 2000, you'll do okay with a gig of RAM or less running in the virtual machine. Now, if you're running Windows Vista, you want to try and give it at least two gigabytes of memory. So, if you have a copy of Vista laying around, it's probably more beneficial if you have a newer generation Mac, such as an iMac. Max it out with four gigabytes of RAM, give two gigabytes to OS X, and give two gigabytes two gigabytes to Vista and that should be enough to keep Windows Vista happy. So that's the first thing that you want to have when working with a virtualized environment. In addition to having as much memory available to you as you can afford, you also want to have a decent sized hard drive so you can comfortably install programs and documents within your virtual machine. In this instance I gave Windows 2000 a 27 gigabyte hard drive. And VirtualBox gives you the option of creating a dynamically changing image file. So if we go back into OS X and look at the location of the actual image file, it's located in uh, your home directory under library VirtualBox VDI. And we'll see that the instance of Windows 2000 that I have right now, it's consuming about three and a half gigabytes on disk. So as, as you install programs and documents within Windows 2000, this image file will eventually expand to consuming 27 gigabytes 
as I fill up my virtual hard drive in Windows. So that's just another thing that you want to look out for if you plan on running multiple virtual machines within OS X. VirtualBox gives you a couple of ways of interacting with your Windows environment. First, there's full screen mode. So you, you can use your Mac as though you were running just a normal Windows installation on the PC. You can, of course, break out of that and run Windows within a window on your OS X desktop. But on top of that, you can enter what's known as a seamless mode. And this is very similar to what's available to users of Parallels or Fusion. And just like Parallels or Fusion, what you're able to do is you can copy and paste between OS X and Windows applications. So if I select this in text, text edit, for example, I'll copy that to my clipboard and I'll come into Firefox and in Firefox now I can just do uh, control V that'll paste apple.com so it's very easy to just simply cut and paste information between an OS 10 environment and the Windows environment the only thing is that you might just get confused with the uh, with the key combinations because in OS 10, copy and paste is Apple or Command C, Command V, and in Windows you're going to have to use Control C and Control V. So, if you're using seamless mode, you can get kind of screwed up because you have to, you know, just make sure that you're in the right operating system using the right keyboard shortcuts, or you're just going to get really confused and messed up. So it is very useful if you just want to have a couple of Windows documents intermixed with OS X applications, you can do that using VirtualBox. In the end, I'm pleasantly surprised as to how well VirtualBox works. First, it's stable. And the key feature to any virtualization product is stability. Because it would be very detrimental to have your virtual PC crash on you in the middle of a time-sensitive project or deadline. Second is the performance. Previously, I had an Athlon XP 1800 Plus with 1 gigabyte of RAM, and that was the machine I used to run Windows 2000 a couple of years ago. Running and using Windows in a virtual environment on my MacBook, I find it to be just as fast, and in some cases even faster, than running it on actual PC hardware. This is especially the case when starting up and shutting down Windows, and I find that starting up in a virtual environment is considerably faster compared to working with a real Windows system. Finally, there's features and price. The inclusion of a seamless mode, which is very similar to Parallel's coherence mode, makes VirtualBox a compelling alternative to commercial virtualization products. Even though there is no 3D hardware support in VirtualBox, Virtualization software as a whole should not be viewed as a substitute for either a real gaming PC or using boot camp. If you want to play games on your Mac, the best solution out there is to use boot camp because that allows you direct access to the hardware and graphics drivers in Windows. Even though Parallels and Fusion might have better integration with Windows by incorporating drag and drop and sharing of documents between OS X and Windows. I think VirtualBox is close enough and is stable enough to certainly warrant its use. And if I had to use a virtualization software, VirtualBox is what I would use at this point. So that's just my thoughts and overview on free open source VM software. All right, that's about it. Peace.